Excuse me, caution tape, just passing through. Nothing to see here. Okay, hello YouTube. The point that I really want to try to make with this video is one, go to parks when it's cold and wet and rainy and there won't be anybody there and it's amazing. Two, I want to tell you a story. It can be kind of hard to understand like why the world around you looks the way that it does. Like, why is this rock here? Why is like sand the color that it is here and it's like a different color somewhere else, right? You know, why is some place have little hills and some places completely flat? And sometimes understanding how your local environment got to be the way it is, is as simple as understanding just a couple of geologic processes. And as soon as you understand them, it unlocks some crazy stuff, some insane stuff. Like this here, for example. This is obviously like mud. This is like clay, it's very hard. Um, but how did it get here? Just for context, that's the ocean. This mud got here when this area was, whoa, was underneath the ocean. So you'd think that the, it was under the ocean and then the land like rose up because of something that happened deep under the earth. The land did rise up, but not because of something under the earth, but because of something on top of the earth. There's water on my lens. Uh -huh. To understand why this rock is weird, we have to find bedrock that is local to this location. So hang on. This is the granite that exists here. As you can see, it's very layered. It's made of layers of uh, biotite granifels and calcifels. I, th I can't remember, it's something like that. And the point is, it looks nothing like that granite. So how'd the granite get here? I'm gonna attempt to walk from this rock to this rock but everything's very slippery. Uh, this is what we're looking at, this is the situation. How slippery is it? Oh, it's not that bad, actually. I gotta, gotta get across there. It doesn't look too bad, as long as, again, it's not that slippery. Oh. Success? Okay, we made it. But this rock is granite. Uh, granite doesn't come from here. And this thing is like, huge not only is it huge it's like round you know it's not like if it was broken off of a larger piece of granite which it obviously was how did it get round there, what did it like erode from water yes but not liquid water the other weird thing about this bedrock is is the same thing that's weird about all the bedrock uh, that is not that has layers in Maine, that exists in Maine. Look at this. Originally, what? This is something between like five and 700 million years ago. This stuff was deposited on a marine seabed, und under the sea. Down here is your home. It was deposited, you know, like, like all rocks are deposited, mm -hmm. in, uh, in horizontal layers. Then, when Pangaea was coming together, which was like the continent that the dinosaurs grew up on, it means all the Earth, and it was coming to, so North America and Europe hit each other and folded up the land, squinched it up, and it made the layers vertical. And it did two other things. The first other thing was that it turned, these rocks are very slippery, was that it turned the Sedimentary rock, sedimentary means it's formed by deposition of sediments, like shelled foraminiferans on the sea floor. Whoa, really slippery. Uh, that die and their shells get compressed into limestone and, and you know, other things like, like sand that turns into sandstone and stuff turns into calcite, stuff like that. That's a sedimentary rock. And when Pangaea was forming, it, the heat and pressure of the collision of the two continents did some subduction which forced the, this plate down into the earth and it turned it into a metamorphic rock. So now all of the bedrock in Maine that isn't igneous is at least partially metamorphosed. There's no real sedimentary rock in Maine anymore. So that finished, that process happened, like finished, like 300, mm, like 400 million years ago with the formation of like the Silurian Ordovician formations, like the Vassalboro Formation, and this one is the Penobscot Formation. The third thing that it did 
is I'm hiking to an example of it right now. All the granite in Maine was formed when the plates collided, when Europe and North America collided to form Pangaea, and North America, the, the edge of the plate near where Maine is, got forced down into the earth. Some of it metamorphosed, that made the rock that you just saw, and some of it, if it got far enough down and it got hot enough, it just melted. And the magma that bubbled up to take its place had time to cool down with a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, and that made this granite. And there's a lot of granite in Maine because the crust got forced down and it melted it. And it created these big, giant granite bubbles, like one of them was like Bar Harbor, or, or Mount Desert Island. It's like this big granite bubble that started to weather up to the surface. There's the same question as we had with the giant granite boulder that we just were at, which is how did it get here? So up here, if I climb up this, if I, if I climb up this, if I climb up this, if I climb up this bank, this is the marine clay. This was laid down when this area was 300 feet underneath the ocean. But if I go down, whoa, this dark clay is different. It's a different color. And it was formed by a totally different process. So if we find rocks that are that color, we'll find the answer. I don't want to be like super dumb or anything, but this thing's so much bigger in person. <laughs> Holy. Look at this. What the heck? That's crazy. Can I climb this thing? Almost certainly yes. Hang on, chat. Whoa, I'm up, that's gotta count for something. So this is a glacial erratic. This is an igneous rock, and as it happens, there are igneous rocks here, but this rock came from several dozen miles north, and it really represents the answer to our question, because this rock was moved by water, but not liquid water. You might know this already, but most of the features in Maine, from the long, thin lakes, to the lots and lots of islands, to the exposed bedrock, to the fact that the bedrock is very, very close to the surface, to the scratches that you see on exposed bedrock that are like, what did this, a giant animal's claws? No, it was glaciers. And the glaciers picked up this freaking thing, the Fernald's Neck Erratic, and uh, rolled it all the way down here and then balanced it as they melted, they just, just dropped it. And of course, as they melted, it created something called isostatic rebound, 
the weight of all those glaciers weighed down really hard on the land. And when they melted, initially, the, oh, the seas rushed in. And then the land rose up again to be above sea level. And this, where I am, I'm pretty sure, would be under the water during the, the, the Younger Dryas, right after the ice caps left. So, will I get to the top of the Fernald's Neck erratic? I actually don't know. I kind of think, you know, get out while you're ahead. I am not a rock climber. I'm just someone who doesn't like to give up. So, yeah. If you made it this far in the video, like it, subscribe. Now what? You can jump this. You can make this jump. You've made much farther jumps. You can do this. Two, one, jump. Ah. This is one of those long, thin lakes, in fact. And up there is one of the granite bubbles that we talked about. So let's look at this mountain very carefully. That is Maiden Cliff. And if you look at the mountain, you might wonder, why is it sort of falls off on that side and goes down on that side? Well, it's because that's the way the glaciers went. They pulled it in that direction. All right, I am bundled. I am bundled. Uh, bundled right the f up. I am on top of a mountain. Oh, actually, with the, with a bundle, like, I feel kind of good. It's wind's blowing like crazy. It's raining slightly. This is definitely the most I've ever asked from my GoPro mics wind, not GoPro mics, my road mics uh, wind thing. So yeah, here we are. Tower. It's under construction. I'm not allowed to climb it. I'm definitely climbing it. There's one guy here, but he's all the way over there at the next look, looking platform. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. I think he's just in his car. Construction equipment, as you can see. Um, yeah, so this is Mount Batty, the Mount Batty Tower, which was just built for tourists. That's the only reason it's here. But I wanted to show you something. So if you look this way, you can see, and hopefully you could hear, that the uh, the mountain goes kind of fades off into the distance or that way. It's like a gentle slope. In fact, I drove up it, right? Now look this way. The mountain just falls off a cliff as it were. And indeed, it, it, there is a cliff. So, uh, excuse me, caution tape, just passing through. Nothing to see here. Um, if you walk up to the cliff, you can see the mountain dips down like really, really strongly. And the question is, why? <laughs> okay, like why is the mountain a different shape on the two different sides? And you might have guessed it, it's because of the glaciers. Um, I gotta get out of this wind, hang on. I think I'm gonna go into the tower that I'm not allowed to go into. Hang on, stand by. Park Rangers, if you watch this video, I'm not gonna do it again, unless I have to come back here and it's still closed. There's like a Christmas star up here, which is why you can't go up here, it's because as you can see, it's sort of, it's sort of somewhat dominated by the star. See that? Anywho, I look ridiculous. I'm bundled up, it's chilly today, okay? It's very windy. The glaciers went that way. And when they slid up the side of the mountain, they slid up the, as they, as they sort of went down towards the ocean, because the land overall points that way, they picked up Till, glacial till. But what they didn't do, because the sort of the geometry wasn't right, was break off massive blocks like the one I just climbed. Instead, they broke the massive blocks off the, the trailing edge, not the leading edge. And when they broke all those rocks off, they broke them in big pieces, which is why it falls off over there. And they sort of rolled them, in this case, out to sea. And so that's why there's so many mountains in Maine that are this shape, that sort of have a, a slant and then fall off really hard. We saw one of them in the last clip, which I'll put in there, if that was still recording before my GoPro's battery died. But uh, yeah, so understanding how the glaciers swept through the area can tell you the story of this place. And understanding how Pangea formed 
can fill in the blanks. But I wanna leave you guys with one really weird thing about the geology of this place, which is the glaciers came through and we know pretty much exactly what they did because they left behind tons of signs. We've been exploring the signs in this video, right? They left behind the glacial till. They left behind the marine clay because of uh, isostatic rebound when the, the continents bounce back up again. They left behind all kinds of signs that we can deduce today. But the problem is they also erased some stuff. And also like there's, we don't exactly know what erased all of the signs of Maine's geology of like a hundred million years ago. I think, I think it's a hundred million years ago, but Maine has like a 20 million year lost weekend where we don't know what was happening geologically during that time. Cause somehow it just got deleted. So even though we know a lot about the past, there's still some things that even now we don't understand. And I think that that's really neat. So I hope this video made any sense. I did get to the three parks that I wanted to go to, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, could you give it a like? Subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a comment on where I should go next. And, I'll, and I hope to see you then. Bye guys. Coming here, getting into this park, by the way, was $4 because I'm a main resident. It's so cool. It's like, that's what tourism does for you. Like tourism is annoying in many ways, especially for me. But here we are in late November, week before Thanksgiving, and I have free reign and it's so cheap at all of these cool places. And there's just this one dude from Massachusetts and I mean, he's more than welcome, you know?